Hey everyone, today we're gonna to cover how to publish out a storyline course to a web URL so people can go to it without having the review link or without it being on an LMS if you just want it for like a portfolio piece or something like that. We're gonna show you how to do that without even having to set up some complex system or using something like AWS. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all previous blog posts covering anything learning development related. So you can see augmented reality, articulate storyline. You can also see how to do voiceovers and narrations, anything learning development related. You can also download templates, Articulate Storyline 360 templates. You can also download XAPI and video templates and use those. They're pretty much free. You can use them however you want. And if you are new to any of the learning development subjects, you can get full courses, everything from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom Scorm, and HTML5 video. Now I get this question a lot. How do I take my Articulate Storyline course, and if I don't have to track learners, or if I just wanna use it as like a portfolio piece, how do I get it onto a website that somebody can go to and take a look at it? Now, if you're building a portfolio with Google Sites, or if you're doing it with like Webflow or something like that, you can't really upload an Articulate Storyline course. And so this would allow you to upload a course and then inside of Google Sites or Webflow or something like that, you can link to this. And so I'm gonna make it as easy as possible here. And I know there's other ways of doing this. You can upload it to like AWS. You can set up an account with AWS. You can upload it there, but there's a few settings that you have to adjust and it gets a little bit more complex than what I'm going to show you today. Today, I'm going to be using two different tools in order to accomplish this. And they're free tools to a certain degree. And if you're doing just a portfolio, you'll probably never even hit the price where you have to upgrade a little bit. And even if you upgrade, it's like $20 a month or something like that. But again, I doubt with the portfolio that you'd hit that. So I'm gonna talk about the first tool is Versal or Vertical. I am the worst with pronunciation, so don't go by me, but I, I'm gonna call it Versal here. And Versal allows me to connect projects and host projects that are somewhere and there's a couple different options, but the one that we're going to be covering is GitHub. GitHub allows you to upload content. Now, GitHub does not make the contents so it's like a web page where somebody can go to it and view it. GitHub allows you to um, create different versions of your websites and other things like that. Most of the time it's used by coders, but what we're going to be doing doesn't require any type of code whatsoever. So I can upload a course and I can have that course on GitHub and then I can connect it in Versal and then in Versal I can then create a URL that sends it out to everybody. So there's a couple of steps here. The first step is to go into Articulate Storyline and to take your course. I'm gonna go into the published course here and I'm gonna publish it just for web. We don't need any of the LMS files. We don't need all of that extra stuff basically that if you, if you publish it to an LMS and you publish it this way, it's gonna try to connect to SCORM and it's gonna throw an error. So we wanna keep it as clean as possible because we're not, this is just a portfolio piece basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and just publish this to my desktop and click publish. Now, depending on the size of your course, it may take a little while and that's something to keep in mind too. If you have a lot of images or a lot of videos, it's going to take a while for it to load on that person's computer. So always compress your images, compress your videos, especially as much as possible. So when people are going to your portfolio, they're not, it's not taking a while to load. All right, there it is. It's now finished and I do not need to zip it or anything like that. You wanna keep it open. Now I'm gonna come into GitHub and we're gonna create a new repository. So once I've signed up for a free account, I'm gonna go in and create a new repository here. Now you can give the repository a name. I'm gonna go ahead and just name it test. This would be like course 101 or something like that. Um, let's call this actually, let's call this course 101. So course 101, everything is available there. 
I don't want this to be public, meaning that people can actually pull the code and they can manipulate it or adjust it or anything like that. You still have to approve the anything they try to commit. If you want this to be private, you can just switch it to private and not worry about that. Now, all you have to do here is click on create repository. And then this is where it gives you like the ability to connect to tools. Uh, GitHub does have a free tool called GitHub Desktop which does uh, allow you to actually create versions and publish new versions of your Storyline course and things like that, which I might cover in a different video, which is really cool. But for now, all we need to do is upload these files. And so we have upload existing files here, and I just need to drag those files. Now do not drag the entire folder over because then it will create one extra layer for you in that final URL. We wanna just keep it as simple as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the folder here and drag all these files, select all the files. With websites, you do, and essentially Storyline is publishing a website, but with websites, it has a lot of files that are needed. It has the HTML, it has CSS, it has images, it has videos. You need all of those files in order for this to run. It's not just one file that runs the entire course. You need all of these files that are inside of this folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag and drop those here. It's gonna take a little bit, but you can see that, uh, all the files are starting to load here. And then once this is done, I can go ahead and give it a name and then click on commit changes. But let's give it a second here. So it is done uploading. All I have to do is scroll down and click on, you don't even have to name it or give anything information there. But if you're uploading like several different versions, you can do like version one, version two, things like that. So let's go ahead and just say V1 standing for version one and then hit commit changes. Now it's gonna process that and then, then we're done with GitHub at this point. That's all we need to do inside of GitHub is create the repository, upload the files from your course, and you would need to create a different repository for every single course that you create, which you can create several different repositories and then upload those same files for each of those courses. This is now done processing. I can see it's all version one, it's all added that label, and I'm good to go there. So now this is where the tool comes in because GitHub, even though we've uploaded it, doesn't actually run it like a website. What it does is it's just kind of the, they do have something called GitHub pages, but it does cost and that would allow it to run it as like a website. But we're trying to keep it free here, especially if you're doing this for a portfolio. So now let's go into the Versal tool. Now in the Versal tool, you can see here that there's no projects created, but what I need to do is inside of my settings is I need to go into login connections. Now in login connections, all I have to do is click on GitHub and then I've already connected it, but then it will ask you to log into your GitHub account. And then once it logs into your GitHub account, make sure that you authorize all projects. Otherwise, you'll have to add each individual project one at a time. If you authorize all projects, it will be able to search through all of your projects. And so you can have as many projects pulled in as you want here. That's just one setting that you need to do. If you want to check out the pricing, you can check out the pricing as well. But it's again, this is more for like if you have really high traffic is where you would probably need to upgrade. All right. So I'm going to go back into overview here and we're going to create a new project here. So this new project, this is where we can import a GitHub repository. So if I have several different GitHub accounts, I can connect those. Or let's go back into settings and notice that you could also connect a GitLab and a Bitbucket. So if you're using Bitbucket, which are similar to GitHub, you can do the same thing this way as well. All right, so let's go back into create a project. And all I have to do is find that project that I just created. It will show up. If I've connected all of these projects, it will show up right there. So no having to go in and create a different S3 bucket. You know, AWS is great, but it's probably a little overkill for just kind of portfolio stuff. And so no having to go in and adjust the settings on AWS or anything like that. I am really trying to keep it as simple as possible for you guys. I'm gonna go in and just click on import here. Now I can give this project a name. I'm gonna say course 101, and it's going to go ahead and say root directory is this. It's gonna go right into that. Um, and then I can hit deploy. Oh, so I don't have any spaces. I can't have any spaces on that and I can't have uppercase. So I guess I shouldn't have changed it there, but I'm gonna hit deploy there. All right, so it's gonna take a second here and it's going to deploy. 
Now, it's not going to work initially because if I click on this preview right here, it's trying to look for a file called index.html. The way that Storyline publishes is the main file, and typically with websites, the main file is called index.html. But since Storyline publishes it as story.html, I can do one of two things. I can simply go in, this is the URL that I can give out, but if I add a slash and then story.html here, now it will go to my course. So now I can just copy this URL. I can go back to my uh, Google Sites or I can go back to Webflow and I can put the link on there and now somebody can just pop open the course there. That is one way of going about it. The second way is if I wanted to go into GitHub here and if I go into the story.html file, I could actually go in and click on this edit button and I can rename this story.html to index.html. And if I go ahead and hit commit changes here, it might take a minute or two for Virtual to actually see this, but if I come back into this, and if I clear my cache, you may have to clear your cache, but notice now it works because if I update something, and if you publish a new version, if you like delete all the files, you upload a new uh, version of the course, you don't have to do anything inside of Virtual it will just automatically update. And so now I don't have to add that story slash story.html. I can just take this link and I can send it out to people. I can put it on my portfolio. I can do things like that. So no having to adjust files, add on extra code inside of AWS or anything like that. This makes it as simple as possible and allows you to host your courses and allows you to uh, put several different courses there. And again, be mindful of the traffic. You could actually go into your website here, go to continue to dashboard, and it will give you analytics as well, which is great. The data won't show up yet until you actually have data. So you redeploy there. But once people start going to your website, you should have data. You can see analytics. You can see when you deployed as well. Uh, you can come in here and edit the config file. If you are advanced, you wanna go in and edit that config file, all of that here allows you to keep track of it, allows you to see how well it's being used as well. You can't tie it to a specific user, but it at least lets you know if people are viewing your course and so forth. Now, you could actually even put XAPI in there and you could capture the actor inside of your course and you can send over XAPI statements to a learning record store and still host your course here. So that is another possibility and I do like this compared to like just publishing it to review because now I don't have that review bar up on top or the review um, information where people enter in their comments on the right hand side. I just have the course and people can just go to the course and view it there. Hopefully this is useful for you and you could see how easy this is compared to using something like AWS. Now, another way is if you're using like HostMonster or you're using GoDaddy or something like that, if you already have your FTP set up, you could actually take your course and upload it to the FTP and just host it on your own website and you don't have to do something like this. But if you don't know anything about FTPs, you don't know anything about HostMonster or um, uh, GoDaddy or anything, anything like that, Hopefully this is at least useful and easy for you to use. If you wanna see anything else like that, or if you wanna see more about this or any questions that you have, go to this YouTube video and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, uh, what you want, what else you wanna see. And then uh, if there's an easier way to do this as well, let me know in those comments below. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button so you can subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and the bell notification so you get alerted of all new videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows me to keep making these videos and allows me to uh, continue to produce new content for you. Also, if you haven't checked out my website, go to my website, check out all the previous blog posts. I do a blog post a week, so you can see all the previous weeks here. You can also download free templates, Articulate Storyline 360 templates and XAPI templates, and you can check out full courses, everything from A to Z on Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, and HTML5 video. That's all that I have for today. So thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.